Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for Agency Live and What's It All About webinar. Um, the first thing you might notice is Hayley was supposed to be here to host this event, um, but a slight change of plan, I'm here. Um, and so it's my first time ever doing this, so please be kind to me because I'm <laughs> quite nervous. Um, but we've got a great panel with us today. Um, we've got Lauren Jennings, who is our co-founder. Um, we have Katie Trout, who is our account director. We have Georgia Hogan, who is a graduate um, DigiPR consultant, and then also Matt Hartley, who is up in the north, um, who is head of DigiPR. And you are Shani. Oh, I'm Shani. <laughs> So I'm the um, office manager and marketing and event support. Um, we do also have a co-host around here somewhere, um, my dog Bonnie. So if you see an appearance from her, then <laughs> so as we said in the invitation, um, this is an opportunity for people um, who work in agencies um, to chat about working in an agency. Um, for um, if you've hired an agency um, and want to know how to get the best out of um, out of them and also make the most of the relationship, um, and also if you're thinking about getting um, an agency, then what to know to get the best out of them. So it's a chance for us all to learn something new um, and just have a nice chat, really. Um, any questions that you have, um, pop them in the QA section and we'll come to those at the end. But without further ado, um, we're going to open the conversation with myth busting. Um, now, we've all heard about agencies and agency life um, and there's a lot of myths surrounding that terminology. So um, when thinking about myth busting, LJ, um, so what, um, to start us off, um, what are the preconceptions and what do you think about myths mm. as an agency life? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest myths is that agencies just take your money and don't care about the <laughs> and are just out to make money and don't care about anything. And when we set up Fountain, it was really important to us that that wasn't true you know yeah. we were a really small agency to begin with and we had to work really really hard for everything that we got and prove ourselves um i remember mark is one of our co-founders used to do this training um with people and he'd start with a little word association game at the start so he'd say like oh when you think of a cat people would say oh i think of a dog when you think of salt i think of pepper and he'd say what do you think of when you say marketing agencies and people would boo like, <laughs> i think mean, marketing agents from generally don't always have the most amazing reputation, but that's not what we have tried to do here at Bounce. We've tried to make an agency that is fully transparent, yeah. that prides itself on results, and is a nice place to work as yeah. well. Yeah, 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 definitely. And Katie, you just want to tackle more yeah. Moments. Yeah, so I think for me, it was that you were going to work all hours of the day, and you know, you're going to be working eight to eight, and it's going to be full on all the time. But I think the myth that definitely busted here is that flexibility is key um no one bats an island if I walk out the door at 3pm because I have a hair appointment it's not <laughs> it's a secret doctor's appointment I'm going to get my hair done I'm done by work within the hours or I make it up and I you know in the evening so I think the flexibility for me is a massive one and I think agencies get a bit of a bad rep that you're actually going to be working yeah all the time but so. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And Georgia, as a graduate, yeah. how do you find the work-life balance um, coming straight out of you? So obviously I graduated from university and went straight into agency life. When I told people I was going to an agency, they're like, are you sure? It's not going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> but because sort of, as Katie mentioned, the flexibility at Mountain um, in the agency, it is sort of, you do have a life outside of work. I could work sort of eight or four, nine to five, whatever works for me. As long as I get the work done in my time, I can take flexi, I can sort of work later where I need to. And it's just nice to sort of still have a life outside of work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Matt, obviously you're um, one of our remote workers, as I said, you're up north. Um, so what myths have you come across um, like working remotely for an agency? Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing is really the myth is that you can't work remotely. Um, and I think there are still kind of some like LinkedIn gurus and things like that 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 say that, you know, you need to be in the office all the time. Um, you know, if, if you're remote working, it's not going to work for you. But I mean, that just isn't true. And I'm kind of proof of that. Um, I mean, I joined Fountain two and a half years ago um, and we built a department 
within that and I've worked remotely 200 miles away from the office you know um kind of limited actual contact in the office as well so I come down like once every you know three three four months um and it's worked perfectly um it is a massive myth that that remote working can't work um and as as kind of the other people have kind of referred to there um it, it is something where it offers you that flexibility um you know but it's nice to be able to come into the office as well but then it's nice to have that kind of that you know obviously that remote working um that way where you've, if you've got something going on or or you know you need to stay in for a package or whatever that, that may be it, it all works really well and yeah it's it's it works really well from my perspective and I mean again I am proof that it does work um yeah. so it is a massive myth great I'm um, sorry the co-host is desperate to get everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you've all had very different routes um, into what you're doing into agency fountain life um, and the agency that you chose. Um, so, Katie, you're originally from the client side. So, yes. what brought you back to agency life? So, I mean, many moons ago, show my age, but um, I started off as in an agency. Then I went to Brownside, and then I came back uh, to agency when I moved to Norwich. And um, I just I miss the team aspect like I, th- I found brand side you were very siloed you did your one job but you didn't actually have much interaction with other teams and I really miss that like, I love getting together with lots of different brains and different kind of people and you just give the clients better work because yeah. there's lots of different people bringing different ideas so mm-hmm. that's what brought me back great um and Matt you also worked um for an agency but you deliberately chose a role which was 200 miles away from um from the office so what made you choose a remote role I mean, yeah, so I came from an agency from where I'm from. So I'm from Lancaster. I worked at that agency for about five years. Um, and to be honest with you, before COVID hit, I would never really have contemplated a, a remote role. I, I personally would have said, maybe that won't work for me. You know, it's not the right kind of thing. But then obviously COVID hit, everybody went remote. Uh, the agency that I used to work at went remote and this opportunity came up during that kind of period. And, you know, I just thought, well, let's take the leap. Um, I think the big thing from my perspective is that obviously it opens up like that kind of a, a door that you would never have been able to kind of think about. Like I'm based six hours away from the office. I never thought that I'd work for an agency in Norwich when the opportunity came around. I was kind of like, not sure, but you know, we went with it and it's been the best thing I ever did. Um, so yeah, it just gives you that freedom. Um, you know, from, from my perspective, I, I could, we could obviously, we can all work from, from where we want, but again, it, it kind of, it just cements that, that really nice culture that we have here. Um, and I guess, you know, from, from Fountain's perspective, we kind of are really inclusive as well with the way that we have, we have several remote workers from all over the country. We don't feel like we're kind of a burden or we're kind of out on a limb or anything like that. Like, you know, if, if we have a day where maybe something's not gone right or or something like that, I know that there are people within the team that I can kind of reach out to and say, can we have like a 10 minute chat? It's just like being in the office, to be honest with you. So it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't ever see you as being like you're still very much part of the team. Like we don't consider you as being like a like us as office yeah, people, yeah. as a remote <laughs> like you're still very tight knit within yeah. the um within the group. And um Georgia, so Fountain is your first taste of agency yeah. life. Um you've been here now for just under a year. Yeah. Um so you've got that under your belt and I mean you're you've hit the ground running. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um but so you've you've obviously you've got that under your belt. You you do an amazing job. Yeah. But why? What makes you want to stay at Fountain? Like you've got, or to stay within an agency? Yeah. So I really like how collaborative it is in an agency. Obviously at Fountain, I can just walk over to someone in the pay team and buy the question. The SEO team, sort of the crow team. Nobody sort of you can't you don't stick within your sort of department. You can sort of just go speak to anyone, ads, project managers everyone's there to listen and everyone will help you if you've got an issue. I really like that because it makes you feel that you're not sort of isolated sort of to your department. Yeah. It's sort of, it is sort of the whole team is a team, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> um, now, what agency changes um, have you seen around your role over the past 
few years. So LJ, obviously you set up Fountain 14 years ago and the world moves. Um, so, but what have you um, seen agencies change over the past few years? Yeah, so I think in terms of Fountain, obviously the agency has changed massively. It was four of us and now there's nearly 50 of us. And that is so much for the betterment of the agency that we're now able to offer so much better services. We've got a diversity of talent, diversity of uh, yeah, different experiences, and that's just so, like we've said loads already, that's just lovely, and it's for the better of the client yes. results as well. And then in terms of what I think clients have changed in terms of what they want from an agency based on from where we were, um, I think really they want you to be a partner across everything that they're doing marketing with. And so we, I think, to get involved in stuff in hearing about things that aren't necessarily our specialism, but we are useful to us in terms of putting together strategies yeah. for our clients. So being a more well-rounded partner rather than just doing our bit of PPC or our bit of S SEO. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Katie, on your side, like you must have seen things change massively, um, like from a client side of things. Um, but how have you found that clients now interact with us? Or how have you found clients and how they interact with so us? So I think it's changed quite a lot in terms of when I first started, it was my, my first job out of uni, <laughs> but quite a few before you all. Um, and, you know, it's very much you pick up the phone and that's how you communicate. Whereas I think obviously through COVID, that flipped to we have video calls and a lot of it's done by email. And I'm actually really, I've really enjoyed the last year, year and a half, where that's now flipped to we're having much more face-to-face -face time with our clients and getting out and seeing them and that for me, makes you more part of their team and you're more ingrained in, in, in what they're doing. And it, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed that change. Yeah. <laughs> um, and out of them, I suppose, Matt and Georgia, because you've had a particular challenge um, in that Georgia was new to the role um, and Matt obviously isn't in the office. Um, so onboarding remotely um, and even more than that, DigiPR wasn't a thing, was it Matt, um, when you first started? Yeah, this, this is it. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, like, again, I came into the Fountain two and a half years ago and was actually quite nervous, if I'm honest with you, about kind of setting up a whole new department. Um, you know, obviously, I was brought in and, and basically tasked with growing from the ground up with a, a whole new department um, that Fountain hadn't had before. So, you know, coming in, being remote, it's completely new, it's completely different. Um, but I think the big thing from our perspective is, you know, those kind of challenges are, are a good thing um and the main thing that that kind of we we found especially in those early days when when i came in initially um was to really make sure that you know we had those processes in place we communicated clearly between ourselves you know we had um kind of a team within within fountain in the office who could also you know help me for kind of settle in and, and get that kind of basically things that I need to know um but I mean from our perspective it's it's worked brilliantly I mean obviously we're flying now from a, a digital PR perspective we've got loads of great clients we've obviously got Georgia who's joined the team as well which is, is really nice as well um and you know we're, we're still looking to grow that so it's just proof that you know that, that obviously things do move in in that digital landscape being in an agency and being in that digital space is obviously great from a, a remote perspective. It can work. It does work now. Um, and I think, you know, when I started back at my old agency sort of like seven years ago now, eight years ago, which makes me feel really old, um, it's 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 shown me that I would have never thought that this would have been a possibility to be able to grow a department in a, in a business that's 200 miles away. I thought you'd have to be in the office and, you know, kind of always there and, and kind of be involved in everything that way. But it does work. And then again, from from like what you said, Shani, um, obviously onboarding a new team member, um, again, it's it's really it was something I was quite nervous about. I was I'll be honest, like it was it was a big thing. Um obviously Georgia, fresh out of uni, she had no kind of skills in the marketing sector. Um, you know, we we were it was it was it was a risk almost to be honest. And and obviously it's worked out really well. Um again, it's just all about that communication, making sure that she had a team around her within the office that would be able to help as well. Um, but I mean, to be honest, we're only a slack or a teams away. Um, and that's kind of what when when I kind of when we onboarded Georgia, um, you know, we had a really nice, robust training plan, but I just made sure that I was available. And I think that it, it kind of worked out really well. I mean, person in the pudding, Georgia's been here a year. She's absolutely smashing it. Um, she was smashing it from kind of week two, if I'm honest with you. So she just expected, you know, exceeded our expectations. And, um, you know, it, it's just proof again that, that it can work and it does work. Um, and you don't need to be in the office all the time.
what about you, Georgia? Is it all rainbows and sand valleys? <laughs> so like that, I was quite nervous coming into sort of a new role. I didn't really know too much about marketing and thinking, oh my God, someone's training me from 200 miles away. I was sort of like, oh my God, <laughs> it's not going to work. But it worked so well because me and Matt sort of have constant communication. I know that, as he said, he's always just back away, if he's message away. Any question that I had, no matter how dumb I thought it was, he would always be there to answer it and sort of give advice. And I think sort of the distance worked better in a way because I sort of was almost forced to become a little bit more independent. Yeah. Where if you usually ask sort of someone how he lives sat next to me, I could sort of take the time to figure it out, ask someone else in the team, sort of grow my knowledge sort of outside of the training plan that Matt set out, which really worked out. Yeah. And because you were, I mean, you, your relationship with Matt is like just as close as what it is with yeah. like Libby, who is in the office, yes. um, who coaches Georgia and like head of SEO. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's my little input. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, at work, obviously, we can have bad and good days. Um, obviously, it's not all sunshine. Um, but how can you overcome them both as the agency and help clients um, overcome their own internal challenges? I don't know. <laughs> no, I think you know, for, for my roles especially, but we get we do get demand clients. It happens. There's lots of tight deadlines, and I think you know that comes from probably the clients internal team having those tight deadlines too so you know it's not ideal we'd like to have the time to to get things done properly but having that team around you where everyone's like okay we can all help we're all heads together we're going to get it done and I think that sort of camaraderie is what gets you through those bad days um and then they turn into a good day yeah <laughs> it all gets balanced, balanced yeah, right? yeah, yeah. bad days say so maybe the google algorithm changes and we don't get any other notification but that's going to be a thing all the clients want to know whether they've been affected yeah. Yeah. now we don't know because we haven't had time to go look at it you know there's all that but then you know coming back to the teamwork thing a really good day is having solved that problem yeah. together yeah, and getting to do a high five at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> knowing that you made it yeah made it through so i think it's the balance isn't it definitely yeah, and I think as well, like one of the things that you can do, there are tactics you can obviously employ to to kind of, you know, navigate those things a little bit better and and hopefully avoid them if you can as well. And I think one of the big things that I always do, especially especially from a digital PR perspective, but I know that other members of the team do it as well in different departments, is is really try and set clear expectations and, and goals and, and KPIs right from the off. And I think that setting those nice and early kind of laying the groundwork in in terms of you know saying to the client look this is where we expect to be this is how we're going to get there there might be bumps in the road um but having that real open honest kind of communication with clients is a good place to start um i mean the one thing you don't want to do is sell yourself down the river um you know promising the world and then you can't deliver that um from a client perspective you know, if, if you're told that you're going to get x amount of leads in in three months and then an agency falls short of that you're going to be annoyed and rightly so because you've been told you're going to do that you've invested the money um and then you've not delivered so from an agency perspective it's just really making sure that you you're really honest really clear everything's kind of documented and then you know that that ongoing relationship will work a lot better and from an agency side we'll have a much better day so that's the that's kind of the, the thing that we need to do yeah great point and i think going back to that honesty thing I think it's fair to say that agency life isn't for everyone, right? Some people want to be client side and don't want to be as part of an agency. Yeah. Agency can be a bit stressful. It's a dynamic environment, <laughs> right? And we and it is balanced. So I think it's being honest with is that if you know if you're listening to this webinar thinking about potentially a career in an agency, is it right for you? Can you are you interested in being in that fast paced environment where all the deadlines come in, but knowing that that will get balanced out by working yeah. with a really nice yeah, because there's pros and cons to both. Absolutely, you know, right. Spinning yeah. a lot of plates. Yeah. yeah. Good plates with good people. Good plates with good people. Anything to add, Georgia? No, I couldn't agree with her. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, obviously, it's a big deal engaging um, an agency. It's a brave thing to do, especially if you had a bad experience in the past um you know it's an investment in time um for onboarding um also money 
and involves trust like in giving us your brand um so how can clients maximize their investment in an agency i think building that relationship i think that is kind of the key to having that successful partnership i think you spend especially in the, the start of a relationship with an agency you spend a lot of time with them like we want to get under your skin and know your brand and doing that with people that you genuinely enjoy spending time with i think makes all the difference so yeah Build build a good relationship with your agency. Okay, okay, that's great. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And I think really, uh, I mean, obviously the relationship needs to be good, but I do think that almost agencies kind of almost need to be like a, a tough big brother in a weird way. Um, they just need to be kind of that kind of go-to um that you can go to, you know, they've got the knowledge, they've got the experience, they've been there before, they know that like kind of line that landscape. Um, you know, from an agency's perspective, we need to obviously do everything that we can for the client. Um, and from a client perspective, you need to know what you would like. But there are probably times where a client will come to us and they'll say, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And we'll kind of look at that and think, actually, you're probably better off doing these things um than what you want to do. And this is why, and this is what experience tells us. And yeah, that's that's where you're going to obviously be able to maximise your investment is is listening to your agency. Um, obviously, there are going to be times when when you kind of want to stick with something and really go at it, and that's fine. Um, but obviously, there will be obvious uh, other other opportunities as well where where the agency comes back and says, "I think if you do this, we're going to get X, Y, and Z for you." And yeah, it's just about making sure that from from that honest and open com- uh, kind of kind of say, conversation you've had nice and early on you've got that trust, you can then kind of leave the agency with it. And usually that kind of means great results for you. I think that's a great way of explaining it, like a tough big brother. Because like, I mean, you have friends who like to sugarcoat things, but then, I mean, like my sister, for example, would just tell me how it is. And yeah, that's what you need in this in this relationship. I think likewise, we want that from the client as yeah. well, right? We need to a client is holding back from us that we can't yeah do yeah. the proper proper job we want to know if you're unhappy with something we, we want to know about it if the goals need to be slightly different we want to know about it. the more information we can get you yeah. know better i yeah. really think that you, your agency needs to understand your brand and your brand values to fully get the most out of the relationship because so say if you're holding some back you don't fully explain the brand how can the agency then sort of go ahead with your goals if they're not fully aware of everything. So again, just sort of the transparency between the client and the agency and the agency and the client needs to be there so that it's the trust and the relationship can grow. Yeah. We've all mentioned trust. So then I, what I take of that as an agency owner is we need to make sure that there's trust within the team as well yeah. because a client isn't going to trust us if they sense that there is money. Yeah. <laughs> there's any trust issues. So I think... Yeah, making sure that as a team, we do trust each other and resolve any issues. Great. Um, Right, before we have a look at what questions um, we've got, we've got a final quick fire question. So, when you're ready. (laughs) So, if you were the client, what's the biggest thing um, that an agency can do to dazzle you? Like, yeah, go first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think just so as the client, what the agency can do for me is to understand my goals. Because some clients have really commercial goals, like sales, revenue, leads, you know, very, very firm metrics. And other clients have secondary goals to that, maybe some brand awareness, maybe um, they've got some test and learn budget that they want to be able to report back to their board about what they gained from that. So I think it's being really, really clear and transparent with what the goals are and us understanding your why and why are we doing this for you. Great. For me, it would be (laughs) to be fun, like make me like you as a person. (laughs) Because you're gonna get the best out of me as a client. Um, dazzle me, take me for life. Where, <laughs> Georgia? Again, I couldn't get earlier, but just understand the brand. Mm-hmm. Sort of, you know, sort of the brand, what it does, the values. So just it has you have them, the agency has an understanding of yeah. sort of your brand and what you want from it. Um, yeah, and I mean, from from my perspective, I, again, it's really just any good agency should really be looking to build that trust from the off um, with you, and and I think that's a really big thing from a from your perspective as a client. You want a relationship that's going to be long lasting. It's going to be fruitful. It's going to get you leads. It's going to get you sales, whatever it may be. So if we can start that. 
that kind of um, you know relationship off on the right foot, honesty, openness, transparency. That's what you're really, really looking for from an agency. Great. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, then let's have a look at if we've got any questions. No, none. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn. Um, we are going to, um, well, this session's been recorded, so we're going to pop it up on our website. We're going to share it in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, head over to our website and you can subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and then we'll also post it on our socials. Um, but thank you so much, our panellists <laughs> and everyone for coming. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.